Hi guys, I'm going to quickly demonstrate the Spring Bones script. I have a scene set up already here and I have a skeleton with four bones in it. I've named the bones Spring 1, Spring 2, Spring 3, Spring 4. You can name the bones whatever you want, but make sure you have the underscore 1, underscore 2, underscore 3, underscore 4. Make sure you have that naming convention where you have the underscore and the numeric value of the bone at the end. Otherwise you can name it whatever you want, but it, the script will look for those numbers, so make sure you have the underscore and the number at the at the end of whatever your bone name is. So I'm going to go over to the command tab here, and here's the expression calling up the script and passing in the values. The first value is the name, and in this case spring would be the name. You can have them all named tail or whatever you want. In this case, their name Spring. The second and third values are what bone you want it to start with and what bone you want it to end with. I'll go ahead and, and start this animation playing. And you can see you're getting a spring action there. And it's starting with bone 2 and ending with bone 4. So it's animating bone 2, 3, and 4, the top three bones here. You can change these values so that the all the all four bones animate. Or you can just have like the top two. Or you can even set both values to one and then you get only the bottom bone animating as a spring, which creates a very rigid spring there. I'm gonna go ahead and set this back to so you can go ahead and, and set this up however you want so whichever bones you want to act as a spring in the chain you can you can have them set up that way now the next number here I'm going to go to the starting position because that's what it affects this next number is is what you want the resting position of the spring to be what angle so like if I set this to 10, this is going to be the resting position. So now when I animate it, it will spring and it will come to rest at that final resting position. You can set this to positive or negative. This works as an angle, so this will be 10 degrees. And then that's going to be its resting position. 45 degree resting position here, or negative 45. So you can set that resting position to whatever you want. I'm going to switch that back to zero. And the next number is where you want the spring to start from. So right now it's at 0 0.5, so it's starting at the resting position right in the middle there if I lower it to or if I let's see I'll increase it to one and it will start all the way fully cocked back and then it will spring forward here so setting it to one is all the way cocked back and setting it to zero is all the way forward so now it's basically a reverse it will swing back the other way so you can start at anywhere in the path like say 0 0.25 now it's going to start here and come down a little bit and then bounce up so you can determine exactly where in the spring path you want the spring to start at I'm going to set this back to 0 0.5 so it starts right at the resting position there and where are we the next one is the angle amplitude so it's set to 90 which means you're gonna have a 90 degree amplitude spring it's gonna spring forward 90 degrees actually when you start halfway through you can see it doesn't quite rotate completely 90 degrees it gets close but uh, because there's some decay on it it's, it doesn't quite reach 90 but if you set your starting position to I don't know. 
start set your starting position to zero or one and then you can see you get the full 90 degrees that it's starting at and you can change that amplitude to 45 or whatever angle you want and having a negative number will start in the opposite direction so you can set the uh, the amplitude to whatever you want there I'll set that back to 90 and change this back to 0 0.5 so we're back to our regular spring here yeah, I'll demonstrate changing it to 45 you get less of a it's a lower spring value 90 you're gonna have that real bouncy spring there now the next value is the speed it's set to 3 right now but if you set it to 1 then you get much slower spring I have it set to loop back here that's why it's bouncing back to you starting over here so you get a real slow loop there set that back to 3 so that's just the speed and the next is the decay if I set this to like 1 it's going to be a super fast decay it's going to decay right away <laughs> barely bounces back at all just kind of snaps back into position set this to 0 0.25 here it's going to be a little bit of bounce one so that's the decay it's kind of how fast is it going to get back to that resting position a lower value is going to take longer a higher value is going to bounce back to that start position faster the next number here is the stiffness how stiff do you want the the spring action across the bones right now it's set really loose it's 0 0.001 or it's 0 .0, 0 0.01 I guess you can set that all the way down to zero which will be the loosest that it will be and it will be a very floppy spring you set that to one and you get a real rigid there's a little bit of a little bit of spring in there but not much you know, set that two is two is I think yeah, two is like pretty stiff there. Um, so I'll set that back to zero, and we'll get a nice floppy. So you can you can adjust the stiffness there and get the stiffness that you want. The next three values are for the or the last three values I should say are for the heading pitch and bank they're the amplitude for each axis and you set it from 0 to 1 so right now the heading has a amplitude of 1 so it's animating in the in the heading if I set the heading to 0 and the pitch to 1 now you can see the spring is working in the in the pitch and the cool thing is actually if you set the you set the bank to one you actually get like a twisting spring action it's kind of hard to see but it's the bones are actually twisting back and forth in a spring action so you can actually get like a twisting spring now you can set these multiple you know you can set them up multiple uh, in a multiple way where you got one set to the heading set to one and then the bank set to one so it's working in both the heading and the bank at the same time but you will have to be careful about that because you can get some really goofy behavior if they're set to lower values it usually works pretty good but when you start getting higher values it starts getting all wacky on you so be aware that you probably only want to animate the spring in in one axis at a time heading pitch or bank so that wraps up the walkthrough here I hope you find the script useful